The St. Patrick's Day Shalala by Janet Nolan, illustrated by Ben F. Stahl. Day after day, Fergus felt a rumble in his empty belly as he sat beside his favorite blackthorn tree. Watching the clouds reach down from the sky and touch the earth, it was a terrible time in Ireland when Fergus was a child. The potatoes had rotted in the fields, and the children lay in their beds at night hungry. Late one night, when the peat fire had burned low, Fergus woke to the sound of his parents' worried whispers. When the sun rose through the mist of dawn, they told him to say farewell to Ireland. They were sailing to America. On his last night in his homeland, when the stars were shining their very brightest, and the moonlight shimmered on the land, Fergus crept from his window and cut a branch from the blackthorn tree. He would take a piece of Ireland with him on his journey across the ocean. As passengers on the crowded ship waved goodbye to the land they would never see again, Fergus whittled the branch from the blackthorn tree into a fine shalala. His tears softened the wood. Fergus worked hard in America. He shined scruffed-up shoes during the day, and for a few pennies more, sold newspapers at night. These were difficult jobs for a skinny boy with tired legs. When he grew to be a man, he laid the tracks where the trains now run. On Sundays, wearing his finest suit, and carrying his shalala, Fergus courted the lovely lass who became his bride. Fergus never learned to read, and he never learned to write, but he always had a tale to tell. On St. Patrick's Day of every year, he told the story of the terrible hunger and his journey to America. One year, Fergus placed the shalala in his son Declan's hands and said, Take this branch as a memory of Ireland. And so it was Declan's turn to tell the Shalala story on St. Patrick's Day. Declan rose before dawn every day. He labored in sun and rain, cold and heat, high above the East River, building the Brooklyn Bridge. His legs grew strong, his hands blistered and rough. Declan always had a joke to share and a kind word for anyone passing on the street. And, at the end of the day, he had a gentle hug for his wee son, Emmett. On St. Patrick's Day, when the stars were shining and the bonfires had burned low, Declan told the story of Fergus and his shalala to all who gathered near. When Emmett grew to be a man... Declan placed the shalala in his hands. The past that walks with me today will walk with you tomorrow, he told his son. Everyone in the neighborhood knew Emmett and his grand singing voice. On St. Patrick's Day, it was Emmett singing Gaelic songs that made the grown-ups laugh and dance and cry. Year after year, Emmett told the shalala story until the year he left to fight in World War I. When he was away at war, the story was not told. When Emmett returned with an injured leg, it was the shalala he leaned on to help him walk. When Emmett's leg healed, he placed the shalala in the hands of his daughter, Mary Mav, and told her, Remember, a good story takes its time in the making and its time in the telling. Mary Mav, was a green-eyed lass who loved to dance a reel, toes pointed, hair flying as she leaped to an Irish tune. When young men left to fight in World War II, Mary Mob and the other women took their places in the factories for weeks, then months, then years. Mary Mob drilled hole after hole in the silver metal of airplanes. One St. Patrick's Day, Mary Ma placed the shalala in the hands of her son, Garrett. May the stories of our past guide you, 
to your future, she told him. Garrett was a big, tall man with bushy eyebrows and eyes that twinkled even when his face was still. He became a music teacher, helping children to play tin whistle, fiddle, flute, and drum. One, two, three, four. He tapped out the rhythm with his shalala. Garrett was not a man who easily cried, but on the day his son Ryan graduated from college, tears of pride welled in his eyes. And so the shalala was passed down through the generations, from Fergus to Declan, Declan to Emmett, Emmett to Merimov, and Merimov to Garrett, who gave the shalala to Ryan. Then Ryan moved to a new house and put the shalala in a closet. There it stayed, until years later, when Ryan's daughter Kaylee found the dusty shalala while playing hide-and-seek. What's this? Kaylee asked her father. A story I forgot to tell, said Ryan. He put down the cooking pot and turned toward his daughter. This shalala is our past, he said. Its story has been told on St. Patrick's Day for many years, through many generations. Why didn't you tell the story to me? Kaylee asked him. I would have listened. I got so busy worrying about tomorrow, I forgot to tell you about our family's story of yesterday. On St. Patrick's Day, your Grandpa Garrett would love to tell you the Shalala story. And so on St. Patrick's Day, when the stars were shining their very brightest, and the moon glowed, Kaylee sat down beside her Grandpa Garrett. Long ago, and far away, he began, in a land where clouds come down from the sky and touch the earth, in a country that is every color of green, lived a lad who answered the name of Fergus. When the hunger of the potato famine forced his family to leave the land he loved, Fergus cut a branch from his favorite blackthorn tree and whittled it into a fine shalala. Fergus brought a piece of Ireland with him to America. When Grandpa Garrett finished talking, he placed the shalala in Kaylee's hands and said, A good story never has to end as long as someone remembers to keep telling it. And so, it was Kaylee's turn to tell the tale of her family and their shalala. Now, said Grandpa Garrett, I'd be honored to have a dance with my little lass Kaylee. With the shalala held between their hands, Kaylee and her Grandpa Garrett danced on St. Patrick's Day by the light of the stars and the glow of the moon. The End